I wanted to quickly kick off this because I don't usually talk about football first of all, but I wanted to kick off this off because I thought this is a really interesting topic and goes to kind of maybe speaks to a larger point concerning Man United. Obviously, you guys know, you know, I'm a big Man United fan and I'm kind of one of those United fans who doesn't really, um, you know, who's not who's not really got their heads in the clouds. I don't necessarily think because we've got a decent manager in Eric Ten Hag or because suddenly now the Glazers are, you know, backing, quote unquote, the manager, that things will suddenly change. I've always been the big believer that unless we get rid of the Glazers, unless the Glazers decide to sell, we're never going to be a club that challenges for the major trophies. The major trophies, I mean the Premier League, I mean the FA Cups, and I mean even the cha yeah FA Cups even and the Champions League. Stuff like the League Cups and stuff, you can fluke and whatever it may be, but those three major trophies especially the league you don't win them unless you are a well-run club unless you're a well old machine unless you do things the right way especially nowadays i think back in the day you could co probably get away with it especially if you're a bigger club like united you could basically just throw your checkbook at most clubs and get their best players and whatever it may be and you didn't really face much competition but nowadays the smaller clubs can hold on to their players far longer they can demand a fire a far higher fee sometimes the players aren't super um, aren't super infused about going to these big clubs anyway because it doesn't mean they're going to play look what's happening with flipping um, what's his name Jack Grish at, at Man City he still hasn't necessarily settled there even though he was you know a record British transfer and whatnot so all these things kind of play into it and I've always kind of come I've always been of the thinking that again unless we get rid of the Glazers or they sell we won't be successful in any way shape or form um, but also one of the major things I think has been a real kind of um horrendous sort of legacy of the Glazers is just generally how poorly we're run as a club and I think the kind of the the lack of accountability and the kind of mickey taking the, the players do to at that club because a lot of these players are rewarded with new contracts they shouldn't get rewarded for they stay at the club for far longer than they should be they're basically forced on some managers in order to play and I think it breeds a culture of entitlement so as much as I despise Harry Maguire as a person from what he's presented of himself so far part of me also thinks it's not his fault he's kind of been enabled to get away with he's kind of been enabled to do the things that he does because the club doesn't necessarily stamp it out they kind of let everybody kind of run a mock, especially if you're a high profile player, you can get away with pretty much anything if you want at United. And one of the things that, of course, surprised a lot of people that was kind of trending on Twitter for what the last couple of days, um, Harry Maguire or a source close to Harry Maguire decided to speak to Mark Ogden, a prominent sort of a journalist who covers a lot of stuff concerning Manchester and Man City and Man United. And basically decided to throw his teammates under the bus um, and basically blame everyone but himself for the fact that he's not been starting at United anymore, right? Um, because obviously Ericsson Hag made some changes after the Brentford loss and decided to go with um, Rafa Varane and... Um, Martinez in, in the, in the, as a defensive pairing and since then Harry Maguire hasn't really had a looking since and when he has played he's looked very very shaky but in general um, it's not really again his fault he's not as good as you know the price tag would make you believe I'd dev he never was probably that good anyway so it obviously proved that we kind of overpaid for him as we usually do um, we're the only club that gets taxed on transfers I think every other club can manage to secure a play pretty well but I think even if imagine if Man United tried to buy Jack Grealish I think we would have definitely paid more than 150 for him but Man City managed to get him for 100 million so there's something messed up with our negotiation that obviously affects the way that we kind of go into these deals and then we end up overpaying for players and then some players can't handle the pressure of the price tag and I think I said from the very beginning that I think the price tag for Harry Maguire really kind of skewed the perception of him as a player because I don't think he's that bad but I also think if you're going to be bought for 80 million people people want to see 80 millions worth of quality if they don't see it they're going to keep mentioning a price tag so there are a lot of people online who are kind of defending Maguire and saying oh he's not his fault he didn't make the price and was, yeah he didn't but now he has to rise to a challenge and unfortunately so far he just hasn't done it especially since more competition has come in which is probably a a worse sort of indication of him as a person because it's one thing playing okay when there's no, no other options around and you're the only person that's always fit and you play because that's one thing you have to rate Harry Maguire for yeah he rarely gets injured and he was always available to play whenever called upon but 
it does say a lot about him as a person that the first point of real competition for his place in the team instead of fighting for his place or wanting to go on loan and prove himself like everybody he did he just kicked you know threw his toys out of the prime and now he's leaking stories to the press and stuff it's quite disgusting but anyway during the international break Harry Maguire decided to leak some stuff to Mark Ogden and it says the following this is an article Mark Ogden wrote that says can Harry Maguire rescue his England World Cup hopes in a career defining week it's um, um, and it continues Harry Maguire is at the beginning of his biggest week of his career. Main United captain has two games for England against Italy and Germany in UEFA's National Nations League sorry, over the next seven days that will shape his season and show whether he can emerge from his nightmare 12 months for club and country. At 29, the world's most expensive defender, Maguire eclipsed Virgil van Dijk when completing his 80 million move from Leicester City to United in 2019. Only 2019, and he's already looking like he's surplus of requirements. Honestly, our recruitment in our club is horrendous, right? We buy a play for 80 million only in 2019 and he's already, you know, depreciated his value considerably. He looks a shell of his former self and I don't really know who we could offload him to if we wanted to. So we might be stuck with him for a long time. Anyway, it continues. He has reached a crossing into his career. There's been pre pre um, precious little good news at United in recent months with injury and loss of form costing Maguire his first team plays. But despite this fall from grace at Old Trafford, England manager Gareth Southgate has kept faith with one of the most reliable performers. Let's not forget that just over a year ago, Maguire was earned his place in UEFA team of 2020 after a standing tournament in which England reached the finals and came within the penalty shootout of winning the first major competition since 1966. The former Sheffield United and Hull City centre-back, <laughs> he hasn't got much to his name in it, just playing for Sheffield United, Hull City and Leicester and a couple of relegations but nothing else to show for it. Um, which also is, you know, goes to show like, you know, his ego must be incredible because he doesn't hasn't won anything and he already thinks he's big time Charlie anyway. Um, he was also a key figure in a return to the semi-finals of the 2018 World Cup, and although he's booed by a small section of England supporters during the Wembley friendly against Ivory Coast in March, Southgate condemned the fans' reaction as an absolute joke. Um, the alarming state of United's career, of his United career, has perfectly illustrated by his emergence um, from the substitute bench in the 90th minute of last Tuesday's Europa League game against FC Sheriff in Moldova, having been partly blamed for the defensive chaos which led to defeats against Brighton and Brentford in the opening two games of the season. Maguire now can't even persuade their manager Eric Ten Hag to trust him in the Europa League game against the champions of Moldova. There is no question that Maguire's future for the club and country is now shrouded in uncertainty, and losing an England place will only make it tougher for him to get back to where he needs to be. But he is in the middle of a remarkable downward spiral. He's actually lucky that Gareth Southgate is so loyal to the players that have done him so well in tournaments. He doesn't necessarily... That's the thing with Gareth Southgate. It's a bit weird to kind of get around because I think in, with some players, it's about club form, but with other players, it's about what he's basically seen in them and how they perform for him in other tournaments so you know you can rely on them. So he has this weird kind of double standard. So some players get picked on club form. Some players don't get picked on club form. No, some players don't get picked because of their club form, but then other players just get picked because they played well in the 2018, you know, tournament, 2019, 2020. It's just, it just doesn't make any sense, really. But Harry Maguire is lucky because I think if he wasn't getting picked for England and wasn't getting picked for United, his situation would be perilous, do you know what I mean? Really, really would it be. Um, until the 79th minute of United's um, league win against Aston Villa in May 2021, little had gone wrong for Maguire. Okay, let's go to the quotes. Um, the quotes are the interesting thing. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it's the one. Maguire has become a lightning rod for the fans' frustration, with the captain struggles justify the arm ban opposition of the team, and the situation has deteriorated with the point where he's now regarded as many as the central factor of defensive problems at United. Um, has Ten Hag identified the problem and dealt with it by dropping Maguire, favoring the defensive partnership of Rafael Varane and Lissandra Martinez, or is Maguire simply a victim of circumstance? Now, this is the leak that got leaked to Mark Ogden. This is as follows. Harry needs pace around him, but he hasn't had that, a source close to Maguire told ESPN. If you put Man City's Ruben Diaz in United's defence and Harry in City's back four, Diaz would struggle and Harry would thrive. Harry hasn't had a good 12 months, but he hasn't had been helped by those around him. Coaches are players, so it's inevitable that his confidence and form have suffered. Absolutely shocking, right, to say this in the first place. And also, the lack of, like, courage, the cowardice in this is at an all-time high because I'm not I'm kind of controversial here because I don't really mind it when players throw their toys out of the prime especially ones that aren't playing because at least it shows you care I think players like you know again I mention him all the time but someone like a Phil Jones who you hardly hear say anything unless he's you know he was getting you know insulted by Rio on the, on the stream when he came out said something and then he put out this flipping sob story thing in the Guardian to people to respect his whatever but for the most part Phil Jones has basically kept his mouth shut 
went to training and kept collecting his check. He has no desire to play football, clearly, right? So that is something that I despise, of, of course, because, you know, I support the club. But obviously, as, a, as I'm human, I can understand why he's doing it. But as a supporter of the club, I hate to see someone just taking up a space in the squad or a space at the club in general and not, you know, obviously playing, whatever it may be. And there's no kind of chance of us being able to get rid of him. But with the Harry Maguire thing, the thing that makes this really strange is that it's only a few games into the season. I think it might be five and he's already throwing his toys at the pram, but he also doesn't have the guts to say it with his chest. He's not saying this himself. He's kind of passed it on to a representative, an agent, a friend, to go and send it anonymously or whatever, however they do it, to Mark Ogden to write up. He hasn't been brave enough to say it out loud. And, you know, at least Eric Bailly did. He said it on his way out, but at least he's kind of spoke about his frustrations about saying that, oh, he feels like when he was at United and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was there, he was preferring only playing British players or playing players based on reputation alone and not allowing other players a chance to go into the team, which kind of bred a real bad culture in a dressing room because it meant certain players didn't matter how poorly they played at the game or how you know poorly they performed in training they were always going to get picked because the manager kind of favored them so that's something that he kind of complained about but he said it with his chest look why he's saying it for a representative so obviously that's something that i'm not rating at all then this assertion that somehow he's like because he says here right if you or whoever is next to him said if you can if you put man city's ruben ds in united's defense and harry Maguire in city's back friends ds will struggle and harry would thrive this is kind of in a weird roundabout way comparing harry Maguire to ruben ds and there's they're no way comparable ruben ds is an actual good defender he may have his weaknesses here and there but overall he's a really good defender well-rounded can cover the ground really really well is strong in the air good at tackling can play a high line can play deep like can cover all all bases for the most part and the other thing that's really amazing about him is that despite all the sort of quote-unquote leaders in that man city dressing room he's still the captain sometimes right he uh, yeah if, I, I think he's good in us are playing but i think he's definitely the captain if i'm not mistaken so he's been able to command that changing room even though he came in pretty late compared to the other players shows the character that he has right the temperament of that player so to compare yourself to him is really, really insane in the most part. And then also to say that because the circumstances haven't been perfect, that's why you've been playing. May not have been a complete mess for the last 10 years. No one's had great circumstances. I think even Paul Pogba could really have a decent argument for saying that he didn't show his best for United because the promises that he was made about United, you know, wanting to make him the, you know, the player they kind of build their team around were never really followed through until maybe he left really was where we kind of followed through and actually signed some decent players that you put Paul Pogba into this current midfield that we have now at the moment and he looks a far better player. Of course, he's injured at the moment, but you know what I mean. So he has a reason to say, but Harry Maguire probably doesn't. Defence has always been maybe, I think, one of our strongest points, especially centre-back. We've always had decent bodies. Not the best, but we've had decent enough bodies where you could maybe say, hey, these players are good enough to get to a certain level. And for the most part, the reason why Harry Maguire should be worrying is that the defence hasn't looked good overall, but the really bad thing for him is that he's looked especially bad his own personal performances have been bad and that's what you don't see here you don't see any accountability of saying hey obviously my performances haven't been up to scratch you just see him blaming everybody else it continues sources have said that Maguire's frustration with goalkeeper David De Gea's communication and reluctance to defend further away from his goal line will also factor in overall malaise in the 90 defence last season that issue has been improved by Argentina defender Martinez arrival from Ajax and his ability to communicate in, communicate with and instruct De Gea in Spanish this is legitimately bordering on xenophobia because if I'm not mistaken, David De Gea has been at the club for more than 10 years, right? Um, he basically speaks English with a fucking Mancunian accent, even though he's Spanish because he's obviously, you know, he spent most of his time in Manchester, especially his adulthood or you know, young man into his adulthood and whatnot. He speaks perfectly good English. He's only he's one of the only players actually who comes out and fronts interviews with the press when we have a poor performance. He's actually, you know, quite scathing and maybe throws his players on the bus for some, you know, in some bits and pieces here and there. And maybe he's been fired by the club behind the scenes, but for the most part, he speaks very well. He gives interviews without any help no translator um he doesn't need you know people to repeat questions to him he's very fluent in speaking english so the fact that harry Maguire is blaming david de gea's spanishness on the reason why he's not been playing well is absolutely insane but it's also a clever play for him because david de gea hasn't has, hasn't had the best 
what last few seasons for at United his standards have maybe dropped people have been calling for his head he's not the best you know defender with his feet he doesn't really def, you know play well to you know behind the high line he doesn't command his box the best so maybe saying these kind of things is good because you know fans actually aren't necessarily sold on the gear and think that he should be sold so you can easily blame him but god almighty again the lack of accountability from this guy is absolutely on another level um and then of course off the back of that um this story came out that essentially alleged that mark ogden might have made up the entire story himself because he said sources which is quite funny that nowadays it feels like football journalists can't get away with just saying whatever I think because of football Twitter and because of social media in general, fans are on journalists' heads and stuff. And if they get stuff wrong, they get reminded of it forever and ever and ever. And if they just make stuff up or they don't, you know, yeah, they don't, not say provide sources, but they don't indicate that maybe this is a legit story, fans just keep going at them, going at them. So I guess the pressure was too much. And also there was news that, or something got leaked, that Eric Ten Hag's team, wanted to contact Mark Ogden and find out if that actually did come from Harry Maguire's team because if it did he was obviously going to be really pissed because if I'm not mistaken there was a story I remember reading that um, Eric Ten Hag is a pretty fair manager in that he understands play frustration but one of the main things he doesn't tolerate is players and agents going to the press to kind of voice their frustrations and disrupt the harmony of the dressing room and whatnot he's like the kind of guy that's like hey my door's always open having not come in and speak to me about your frustrations about not playing about not getting enough minutes about not being including in squads whatever your issue is not having a new contract whatever it is but don't go to the press of it because if you go to the press of it you're going to upset the whole harmony of the group so it's, it's kind of like a you know a law that he has a rule so i can imagine how pissed off he must be for his captain someone that he said will still be captain too like he put faith in him he played him a few matches obviously it didn't work out but he still was somebody that kind of had his back you can assume how mad he's going to be so I've, i heard that you know or i read online actually that he was going to reach out to mark Cotton's team and find out if it did actually come from him and i guess you know the pressure was put on him or i guess maybe harry Maguire's team said something and this is the development so far regarding the story this is mark ogden talking on espn about it Diaz would struggle and Harry would thrive. Harry hasn't had a good 12 months, but he hasn't been helped by those around him. Let's welcome in, shall we, Mark Ogden first. And Mark, can you just confirm the source close to Harry Maguire isn't Harry Maguire? <laughs> it's not Harry Maguire, no. Despite what <laughs> social media seems to think today. Harry Maguire hasn't phoned me up, so uh, yeah, let's put that on straight right away. Has he got a point, Mark, your source? Well, I think so. I mean, look, I mean, he does stress in there that Harry has had a great time, hasn't had a great time the last 12 months, and he's had a terrible start to the season. I'm not for one minute suggesting that Harry Maguire should be back in the United team or in the England team, but I do think that the players around Harry Maguire, certainly last season, I'm not suggesting. You hear what he said there? So maybe he just made up the story himself. I don't really know. But one thing for me that makes it true, I think, is the fact that we haven't heard anything so far from Harry Maguire personally and his team. They haven't come up and or come out and clarified anything. They haven't set the record straight. No kind of vague statements, zero. It's been absolute cricket. So clearly it was something that Harry Maguire said. And I guess now he's going to face the consequences of it. And I think in general, if you're Eric Ten Hag, you have to put your foot down and lay the law and basically strip him of his captaincy just to kind of send a message to the team that no one's above reproach. That kind of, you know, kind of attitude or that kind of way of thinking or that kind of way of talking and acting will just not be tolerated. But the concerning thing is if he doesn't get stripped of his captaincy, that we know who's in charge at United, really. We know the Glazers are really in charge and managers are just kind of, cust you know, temporary custodians or whatever it may be. Um, but the real owners, the real kind of bosses in charge are Richard Arnold and all these kind of American cronies. That's what happens. So I'm hoping he does get straight to his captain. Just to send a message. Obviously, you know, him going to moan to the press isn't new. Players do it all the time. And if anything, United are basically, you know, breeding this environment where players can get away with whatever they want. But, you know, going forward, we're going to need to have some discipline. We're going to need to people kind of you know not doing those kind of things going forward because we want to get to bigger and higher places and we can't be having people just saying whatever and you know we just can't we just can't